none of the producers have any financial interest in the products or procedures shown. Supranuclear Pathways literally takes ophthalmologists to a different world and is always filled with mysteries and surprises every time we read the theory behind the pathways and their lesions. Supranuclear Pathway A Closer Look The eyes move in order to acquire, fix and track visual stimuli. The movement of the eyes are controlled by pathways in the brain termed as supranuclear, nuclear and internuclear pathways. Eye movements can be classified as saccadic or fast eye movements, smooth pursuit or slow eye movements, vergence, it moves the eyes in opposite directions, vestibular, holds retinal image steady during brief head rotation, optokinetic, holds retinal image steady during sustained head rotation, Saccades. They are fast eye movements that bring the object of interest rapidly onto the fovea. For the initiation of horizontal saccade to the right, supranuclear inputs originate from the left frontal eye field and stimulate the right paramedian pontine reticular formation which sends excitatory impulses to the right sixth cranial nerve nucleus. From there, Impulses travel to the left third cranial nerve nucleus via the medial longitudinal fasciculus to stimulate the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus muscle, producing a saccadic eye movement to the right. Smooth pursuits. They hold the image of a small moving target on the fovea. For the initiation of horizontal pursuit to the left, supranuclear inputs originate from left parieto-occipital lobe and descend to the left sixth cranial nerve nucleus. From there, impulses travel via the medial longitudinal fasciculus to the right third cranial nerve nucleus, causing stimulation of the left lateral rectus and right medial rectus, resulting in smooth pursuit movements to the left. Let us have a look at horizontal gaze abnormalities. Horizontal gaze palsy due to lesions of the paramedian pontine reticular formation PPRF. PPRF has burst neurons responsible for saccades. A lesion in the right PPRF will disrupt impulses to the ipsilateral sixth cranial nerve nucleus and thereafter to the contralateral third nerve nucleus thus inhibiting horizontal saccades to the right side. Horizontal gaze palsy due to lesions of 6th cranial nerve nucleus. Right 6th cranial nerve nucleus lesions at level of pons, which constitutes the horizontal gaze center, will not send impulses to the contralateral 3rd nerve nucleus via the medial longitudinal fasciculus, thus interrupting both saccades and pursuits resulting in ipsilateral loss of voluntary and reflexive conjugate movements to the right. Vertical gaze lesions are due to disruption of vertical gaze pathway at the thalamo-mesencephalic junction or at the midbrain. Dorsal midbrain syndrome, also called Parinod syndrome, is due to lesions of the posterior commissure where fibers from the interstitial nucleus of Cajal cross over to subserve the oculomotor subnuclei and include features such as this seen in a patient with supranuclear vertical upgaze paresis. Absence of upgaze with lid retraction and nystagmus on attempted upgaze. Pupillary light near dissociation is also present during sparing of pretectal fibers. This is a patient with combined up and down gaze paresis. Isolated down gaze paresis is much less common. Let us have a look at internuclear ophthalmoplegia. This is a patient with right-sided internuclear ophthalmoplegia showing deficit in right eye adduction with nystagmus of the abducting left eye. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia on right side due to medial longitudinal fasciculus lesion of the same side will not send impulses to the psilateral third nerve nucleus causing deficit of adduction in right eye. Nystagmus of contralateral abducting eye. Convergence may overcome the adduction deficit. Bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia. This is a patient with bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Upon right gaze, the right eye abducts but left eye doesn't adduct. 
and upon left gaze, the left eye abducts and the right eye doesn't adduct. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia due to medial longitudinal fasciculus lesions on both sides will not send impulses to the third nerve nucleus on both sides results in deficit of adduction in right eye, nystagmus of contralateral abducting eye and deficit of adduction in left eye, nystagmus of contralateral abducting eye. Convergence may overcome the adduction deficit. The right-sided one and a half syndrome. Lesions involving both the right sixth nerve nucleus and right MLF causes one and a half syndrome. On right gaze, the right sixth nerve nucleus lesion interrupts signal to the left third nerve nucleus causing disruption to the right lateral rectus and left medial rectus muscle, thus producing a right gaze palsy. On the left gaze, the right MLF lesion will not send impulses to the contralateral third nerve nucleus causes an adduction deficit in the right eye. The one is an ipsilateral right conjugate gaze palsy. The half is ipsilateral right INO due to the lesion of right medial longitudinal fasciculus. The only intact horizontal movement is abduction of the contralateral eye which also has abducting nystagmus. Vestibular ocular reflex VOR. The VOR holds the image on the retina during brief high frequency rotations of the head which occurs during walking. VOR are driven by the semicircular canals for angular movements and otoliths of utricle and saccule for linear acceleration. Impulses from these structures pass along vestibular nerves to the vestibular nuclei in the medulla of the brain stem. The vestibular nucleus sends inhibitory impulses to sixth nerve nucleus of same side and excitatory impulses to sixth nerve nucleus of opposite side causing deviation of eyes opposite to the side of rotation of head. VOR is intact in supranuclear lesions. A clear understanding of the horizontal and vertical pathways helps in localizing the lesions at various levels, which can be confirmed on neuroimaging. This video may not explain all of the supranuclear pathway, but it gives a closer look at the most salient facts and points about this complex pathway.